What's up guys, it's Brian Alzer with NeverSate.com and today we are talking about the iconic Atlas Stone. They're without a doubt the most recognizable event in a strongman competition, so you should probably know how to use them. That's also why it's on the back of all of our shirts. Now you might recognize the name Atlas from Greek mythology because Zeus condemned a bunch of titans to hold up the heavens to keep them out of trouble. But as long as there have been people, there's always been some dude looking at another dude going, I bet you can't pick that up. And it would seem that they usually use stones as a test because stones are heavy. Now I kind of touched upon it in the gym tour video, but right behind me you will see the Icelandic flag and the Scottish flag, and it is not by chance that they are right next to the stones. And the reason why is because both those countries have long histories with lifting stones as rites of passage, tests of manhood. So we're gonna cover some of those right now because without them, we probably wouldn't be lifting stones today. So in Iceland, they use the stones as a test to see if you were strong enough to go on fishing boats. The lightest of which they called the weakling stone and it was 49 kg or 107 pounds. My guess is if you could only lift the weakling stone, you were going to be doing a lot of mopping. From there, they moved on to the half strength stone, which was 228 pounds or 104 kilograms. And finally was the full strength stone at 341 pounds or 155 kilograms. They're also responsible for coming up with the Hoosfeld stone, which I'm not too happy with you guys about, but that weighed in at 418 pounds and it was actually originally a doorstop for a sheep pen. And the test of strength was to pick that thing up and walk all the way around a sheep pen. Now, I don't know how big the sheep pen was, but I'm guessing it wasn't a short distance, and 418 pounds of anything is not light. Then we move on to Scotland where there were manhood stones. Now these were rites of passage where in order to be considered a man, you needed to be able to lift up certain weights of stones. We could use more rites of passage. The most famous of these that I've been able to find seem to be the Dinny stones, and they weigh in at 321 pounds, 413 pounds, and 734 pounds. That's a big baby. Now fast forward to modern times, we use stones all the time in strongman competition. Traditionally, they are big, round, smooth stones that are very, very hard to hold on to. But every once in a while, you'll still see a traditional field stone that either you need to pick up and load, or you even need to pick up and clean a press above your head. But in my opinion, they are the coolest thing going on in strength sports right now. If you spend any time picking up anything heavy, I think you should try out some Atlas stones. Number one, because they look awesome, and number two, you need a little perspective to see just how horrible 300 pounds can really feel. Plus, I think they're one of the very few actual true tests of functional strength. If you can pick up a 300 or 400 pound Atlas stone, you can pick up a 300, 400 pound anything. So there's a little background on the very cool history of the Atlas stone, and now I'm gonna show you how I personally think they should be picked up. Let's go. All right, so you're gonna line up with your feet just outside of the stone. You do not want them too far away or too close. If you're too close, your hands won't fit. If you're too far away, you're gonna run into problems later when you try to get to the lap position. You're also not gonna want the stone too far away from the platform that you're loading to. If it's too far away, you're gonna need to do this stupid little duck walk, gimp walk thing. You don't wanna do that. If you're too close, you're gonna end up running your hands right into the platform, and that is not cool either. This is gonna take you a little bit to figure out, but it's also why sometimes when you see someone deadlifting a stone up, from the bottom position, it looks like they're corkscrewing or they're twisting. They're doing that intentionally so they don't smash their head on the bar that they're trying to load the stone over. Just part of it. Now you've got the stone where you want it. As a general rule of thumb, draw an imaginary line between your ankles, splitting the middle hemisphere of the stone. With larger stones, it's gonna have to change a little bit, but as a beginner, this is a general rule of thumb. Perhaps it should have been a rule of the wrist. So if that imaginary line between your ankles is splitting the stone in half, you're going to drive your hands straight down through the middle of your foot. This should have your arms directly in a straight line on each side of the stone. You don't wanna curl your arms around the bottom of the stone, otherwise you're lifting from more of a deficit and you're sticking yourself in a much greater risk of a bicep injury. Me personally, I try to get my air up top because you're gonna be in such a deficit anyway that your diaphragm's already gonna be collapsed. You're not gonna be able to get much air in your belly while you're down there, so try to get your air before you reach down for the stone. Now in today's video, we're not gonna be talking about tacky. We're gonna get into that in part two. But people get their hands underneath the stone in a couple different ways. Number one, they will roll the stone on top of their fingertips. This hurts. But you're not gonna die and you're gonna be able to get a hold of the stone. That said, I typically don't do that. Some people will spread their hands really wide so they get more surface area actually touching the stone. And some people like to make their hands into V's, like Spock. But sticking your hands in V's or even spreading your fingers out really wide will allow you to get further underneath that stone, which is gonna become super important when you try to pick this thing up. 
Now when you go to apply force into the stone, you're gonna get some immediate feedback. If your arms are too far back, that stone is gonna roll forward. You need to adjust. If your hands are too far forward, the stone's gonna roll backwards. Again, you need to adjust. You want your hands directly perpendicular to the stone, creating a 90 degree angle so that all the force that you're applying into the floor travels right up your arms into the stone and you pick the thing up. Now the actual movement of picking up the stone is not a squat. You do not want to lift this thing with your legs. Your cue is going to be the exact same on the deadlift that you're trying to push the floor away, but if you bend down like you're trying to pick something up with your legs, number one, you're probably curling your arm around the stone, and that's a mistake. And number two, you can't squat up a stone. It just doesn't work. This might look dangerous, but hardly anyone ever hurts their back lifting up a stone. The reason why is because when you're crushing that thing towards you, it's acting just like a really, really large belt. If you don't have any space between the stone and your body, then it's actually kind of supported in a weird way, and as long as your brace is good, you really shouldn't get hurt. So to recap part one, you're gonna start with the stone at a reasonable distance away from the platform so you don't need to walk it towards it, and you're not gonna hit your head on the bar when you're picking it up. Number two, you're gonna line up with your feet just on the outside edges of the stone, just far enough that you can still fit your hands on the sides, and you're gonna draw an imaginary line between your ankles that's gonna split the stone in half. Number three, you're gonna get your breath. Number four, while keeping your hips higher, you're gonna reach down and dig your hands under that stone either by rolling it onto your fingertips or making V's with your hands getting as far under that thing as possible. Your arms should be perpendicular to the stone in a straight line, you should not be curling around it. Then you're gonna squeeze with as much pressure as possible on the sides of the stone, push the ground away and pick the stone up. If you did all that right, the stone should be on its way up and we can move on to the lap position. All right, man, congratulations. You broke the stone off the ground. That is a massive step. Trust me, you're gonna come up to a stone very soon that you're gonna go to pick up and you're gonna swear it's glued to the ground, which it might be with tacky. But getting to the lap position is an awesome thing because number one, you can breathe again, and number two, you have some biomechanical structure supporting that stone so you can get a little bit of rest. That's some people do this differently than me and they just pinch their knees together and try to trap that stone, but what I personally like to do is deadlift that stone high enough that I can move one of my legs inward so that my feet are much closer together and the stone rests right on top of my knees. This is also why you put your feet just outside of that stone so it takes very little motion for there to get some biomechanical support underneath the stone in the lap position. Now the stone is on top of your knees and your butt is down, you're counterbalanced so you can move that thing to place it exactly where you want it on your chest. The further you roll that stone out on your knees, the higher up on your chest you can get it. When you really think about it, the main point of contact on a stone is only a couple inches of a circle. I want you to picture taking that circle and putting it on top of your Superman or Batman emblem, even up above that. So I'm aiming for a spot right about here so that the stone actually dries my chin up. When your hips decide to hinge, that stone is going to have a certain level of sliding. When that happens, if you start it out with the circle of your stone down here, Iron Man style, it's gonna slip down your stomach and that thing is not going anywhere. You wanna have it way up on your chest, above your Batman or Superman emblem, so that when it slips, it slips down to the middle of your chest. That will still give you plenty of clearance to load the stone to whatever height you need to. But again, all this is determined by how far you roll that stone out on your knees, but me personally, what I like to do is roll it far enough out that that stone is driving my chin up. Now we need to talk about arm positioning. So I know you guys have seen people load stones and you've always asked yourself, why don't they stick their hands underneath? Because that makes the most sense. That's how you would have the most support. Two reasons. Number one, you're gonna tear your bicep and that is not cool. And number two, you run out of real estate. When you're crushing something around and your hands are underneath, when you go to raise it up, your face gets in the way. You cannot extend. You can only bring your arms up so far. If we move our arms up a little bit more and we go to more of a bear hug position, you run into the same exact problem. Your face gets in the way. You might be able to get the stone a little bit higher, but you still can't extend the way that you need to if you're loading to a higher platform. So for this reason, you drape your arms over top the stone at around 10 o'clock and two o'clock position. Now I know it seems like that stone is going to roll right out the second that you start to apply force, and sometimes you'll be right, but that is why you work on your crush strength. Once you have your arms draped over in that 10 o'clock, two o'clock position, you want to squeeze that thing to your body like you are trying to crush the life out of it. But having your arms more over top of the stone allows you to fully extend and roll that stone up towards your face, which gives you a much higher load position. Is it harder to hold onto? Yeah, but if it was easy, everyone would do it. So let's quickly recap what we did while the stone was on our lap. To get it to our lap, we deadlifted it high enough in a directly straight line and then moved one of our feet in so we could rest the stone down on top and we sat our butt down. This allowed the body to take that weight and to counterbalance that stone. 
Once we were counterbalancing, we slid it out towards the end of our knees so that it rolled to a point higher on our chest, driving your chin up in the best advantageous position possible. So when you applied force, whatever slippage you got, whatever real estate you lost, still held you in a good position rather than dropping down to your stomach and making you look like a praying mantis. Like this, that doesn't look cool. Then you drape your arms over in the 10 o'clock and two o'clock position so that you can get full extension and roll that stone towards your face as you go to load. The last thing that I do before I decide to explode to load the stone, I get another huge belly breath, then I crush that thing to my body like I am trying to squeeze the life out of it. Now it's time to use your hips. So if you decide to lap the stone the way that I do where it is on top of your legs, I raise my hips a little bit and then I hinge. As I hinge, I try to roll that stone up my face. The quicker that my hips go from point A to point B, the more vertical pressure I can get on that stone exploding up. If you're one of the guys who has a stone sitting between your legs, kind of like a pregnant lady, there is nothing wrong with that, but you're gonna have to figure out how to get some rebound and then front squat that thing up. The way that I do it is more of a hinge. Think about it as like a kettlebell swing or a clean or a snatch or something where my hips are going from point A to point B to get the vertical speed, to get that stone moving upward. Hope that makes sense. So while I explode into my hinge, I'm trying to roll that stone up towards my face while pushing my stomach forward, which is gonna give me that couple extra inches so that when it comes down on that curve, it will be either on top of the platform or over the bar. And that's pretty much how I load a stone. All right guys, so there you go. There is a very basic introduction on how to lift and load Atlas stones. In part two, I'm gonna cover tacky, what to do if you do not have access to stone, assistance exercises, and stone shouldering. But hopefully this can help you get some of the basics down because lifting stones is awesome. A very special thank you to all of you who went over to my store and have bought t-shirts and sweatshirts. That has been absolutely amazing and humbling. And thank you very much to all of you who decided to buy personalized programs. That too has been amazing. Most of you should have your programs by now. If you do not, go ahead and shoot me an email unless you just bought one in like the last 24 hours. I'm still working on those. But thank you, it's your guys' support that allows me to continue to make these YouTube videos. I hope you enjoy watching them because I enjoy making them and I would like to continue doing that. And I also have a new video idea, but I'm gonna need some help from some of you. After I put out that gym tour video, there were a ton of you who said that there is some point in your life that you would like to do something similar or open up your own gym or it is your dream to own your own facility. What I need you to do is go ahead and ask me some very direct questions about the financial side, about whatever you want to know about. Give me some exact questions. I wanna make a Q&A video all about what to know when opening your first gym and I want to make it relevant to what you guys wanna see. So go ahead in the comment section down below, ask me any questions that you might have or that you've wondered about opening your own gym. Ask, ask me anything involving that. And I'm gonna to try to make an entire video just about that. I am super excited about that one, but like I said, I wanna make it relevant and useful to you guys. So please leave me some of those questions down in the comment section down below. But as always, thank you guys very much for watching. I will catch up with you guys later in the week. Until I see you then, go out and do something amazing with your lives. Keep working hard, be nice to each other, and I'll see you then.